When I originally got into 3D printing, the two primary materials that were available were PLA and ABS. At the time, PLA was primarily used for things like trinkets, models, um, anything really that wasn't gonna be put under a lot of stress, and ABS was the other material that was available, and it was used for pretty much all functional 3D printing because of its added strength and the fact that you can leave it in a car on a hot summer day or use it in an environment where it gets quite warm and it's not going to uh, warp or change shape like PLA would do. Now fast forward five or six years and there is a ton of different filaments available. Like it is hard to keep track of them. It feels like every couple of weeks there's a new material coming out and not only is there different materials, there's also blends of these materials. So you've got carbon based ones, you've got glass filled ones, you've got like polycarbonate ABS blends. There's all these different materials coming out and it's uh, almost tough to keep on top of all these different filaments that are now existing. One pretty awesome property of ABS is how it reacts to acetone. Um, back when ABS was being printed a lot more often, people would use ABS, they'd take a little bit of it, mix it with some acetone, so that way it would actually break down the ABS and create kind of a slurry, and then you'd wipe that on your 3D printer's bed, which would help you get a really good first layer adhesion. The ABS slurry was great for printing with ABS because uh, unlike PLA, it's a lot more finicky of a material. Typically, you're gonna need an enclosure, otherwise you'll have all sorts of warping. Um, you'll also have layer separation and that is because the shrinkage ratio of ABS is also quite a bit higher than PLA. And so again, if you don't have it cooling down uh, evenly, then that's when you get the corners of the ABS pulling off of the bed. So like I mentioned, if you put ABS in acetone, it will actually break it down. But if you just put ABS in, let's say a container that's got acetone in the container, but it's not actually touching the part, the fumes coming off of the acetone are enough to um, break down the outer layer of the ABS and smooth the layer lines, which gives it a really awesome, not only glossy, but just almost like an injection molded look compared to 3D printing. And this is great for um, busts, it's great for props, really anything that is printed in ABS that you want to smooth out. Um, it gives it again, this incredible look without having to do all the sanding, primer filler and painting, uh, which is which is really cool. I know quite a few people that have done this and this has always been something since the beginning that's kind of been on my list of projects that I wanted to do, um, but I just never got around to doing it until now. So today we are going to be taking the Witcher print that I uh, printed out about four months ago in green ABS. In this video, I'm gonna take you guys through the process, um, all the things that you need, and of course, we are gonna take a look at the end result and see how much of a difference it made. I'm really excited, it's a bit of an experiment, and I hope you guys are excited too. Without further ado, let's get right into the video. Before going any further, I do wanna have just like a general safety notice. Acetone is pretty nasty stuff. Not only is it really flammable, but the fumes coming off of it are terrible to breathe in. So if you have the ability, I would recommend doing this outside. If not, at least make sure you're in a well-ventilated area. I also recommend using gloves, and if you have a respirator that you can throw on, that is definitely something that you will not uh, be upset that you used. So. Let's get into it. For this project, my goal is to just use things that I kind of already had laying around the house. I'm gonna be using a paint can that I had used for an old UV curing station, uh, a lid that I had laying around for that paint can. We're gonna be using some paper towels, acetone of course, some tape, and I've got these little wooden paint mixing sticks that we'll also be using, and of course, a ABS printed part that you're gonna to wanna to be doing some smoothing on. Setup is actually really straightforward. All you're gonna do is tear off some paper towel, line the inside of the paint can with that. I then went ahead and pulled the paper towel up slightly so that way I could fold it over the lid of the paint can and uh, just apply a uh, one line of tape around the outside to hold the paper towels to the paint can. What you don't want is the paper towels to actually be touching the printed part because the ABS print will actually become wet and if the paper towel touches it, then it can leave marks or stick, uh, stick very, very hard to the printed part. So some people actually use magnets. They'll put magnets on the inside and outside of the can to uh, ensure the paper towels don't fold over, but tape typically works uh, fairly well. Just again, be careful. The goal is to have the paper towels lining the outside or the inside of the can without touching the middle where the printed part is gonna be. Once I was done with that, I took two of the paint mixer sticks. I snapped them in half so that way they'd actually fit inside of the can. And I just stacked them on top of each other so that way I had something to place the print on. 
Um, you don't definitely, you definitely don't have to use this. I use them because I had them laying around. If you have some kind of like a metal screen or really just anything that you can place the printed part on, the main reason I'm doing this and not just setting it down on a lid is if there's any acetone that runs down from the sides onto the bottom, I don't want those soaking up underneath the bottom of the print because that can cause the print to deform. So again, you're basically just creating some kind of a little stand, even like a wooden dowel that you have sticking up from the bottom would be fine to, as a little platform. But again, just something to raise the print off of the bottom ever so slightly. Once I had that done, I took the paint can that was lined with the paper towels and poured some acetone in there. Um, you want to do your best to soak the paper towels without having excess acetone that's soaking on the bottom or running everywhere. Um, the way I did this was actually poured some acetone in there and then I just rotated the paint can to make sure that I got the acetone soaking um, all the different sides of the paper towel because you want it to basically have fumes evenly from all different sides and make sure that the uh, printed part is getting coated evenly. After that, I put the paint can down on top of the printed part and pressed down to seal the lid to the paint can. I set a timer for 15 minutes and just let uh, the magic happen. When the 15 minutes is up, I went ahead and quickly lifted up the paint can to see how things were looking. The print was looking glossy and I could see that some smoothing was going on, but I definitely felt like it needed a bit more time. So I went ahead, closed it back up again and put a timer on for an additional 15 minutes. When that timer was done, I looked at it again and saw that we were really, really close to where um, I wanted to be. Like most of it was looking nearly perfect. There was just a couple of parts that still had a bit more layer lines that I felt like could use a bit of additional timing. However, unfortunately, because of the size of the model in comparison to the paint can, it was probably a bit too big of a model for that paint can. And the second time I closed it up, the paper towels actually did touch one part of the print and stuck to it quite well. So when I was able to pull the paper towel off and get the print out, I just decided that enough is enough. I didn't want to put it back in and get the print even softer and then have you know me losing the entire print because overall I was pretty happy with how the uh, vapor smoothing had gone so far. When you are done, I highly recommend just leaving the print where it's at for at least 30 minutes to an hour. The main reasoning is because the print is kind of soft or gummy and wet on the outer perimeter, if you grab it with your hand, even if you've got gloves on, then you're risking uh, leaving some kind of indent or indentation from your hand on the model, which is not gonna be good. So I let it sit there for roughly 45-ish minutes and then it was completely dry to the touch and I was able to uh, admire the vapor smooth print. Again, overall, I think it looks great. The whole backside of him, of The Witcher looks fantastic. Um, the shoulders are crazy smooth, even a lot of his hair and face. The only part that I felt could have used a little bit more time was kind of the upper chest or shoulder area. He's kind of got his armor on, which everything is just out and easy for the um, acetone vapor to um, kind of get onto, but the top portion right here is an inner cavity. So I just feel like it did not actually get uh, as much exposure to the vapor fumes as the things that were a little bit more external. So um, depending on the geometry of your part certainly is gonna have an effect on how even of a job the vapor smoothing does. And I do think that the additional 15 minutes could have helped that upper portion look a bit more uniform with everything else. But again, all in all from before versus after, it is completely a different looking print. It looks awesome. It's got a really cool glossy reflection to it. And again, it just blended all those layer lines and gives it a really smooth to the touch feel. Since it's the acetone vapor that's doing the vapor smoothing, you can actually speed this process up by heating up the enclosure. Um, I know that some people have used their 3D printers heated bed to slowly heat the chamber or some people have even used like an external heating element. The reason why I opted not to do that is kind of for safety, uh, because when you're heating up acetone, those fumes are already nasty and you're speeding up the process. You've just gotta be so much more careful. Also, when you're heating it up, I've seen people have results where the results I got in half an hour, they got in about five minutes. And with this being something that I haven't done myself uh, previously, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't going too quickly because it's much easier to add an additional 15 minutes of time, but it's a lot harder to take back those, those minutes. And when it's heated up, each minute counts. And so if you have it in there too long, even by just a minute or two, you're gonna be losing detail and potentially could get a part that just doesn't look at it anymore because it's smoothed out too much and you've lost so much of those details that you actually wanted to keep. Overall, this was a very simple process and extremely low cost. And I would say that the results for a first timer that had never done 
done it himself were pretty impressive. Uh, I can certainly see how someone that's like a prop maker would want to do this instead of having to hand sand everything. Doing this, you can probably get rid of a lot of the steps and minimize the amount of primer filler and sanding that you have to do before actually painting a 3D printed part, which is awesome. This also works for ASA, which is essentially just like ABS, but with a uh, UV reactant property to it, or UV, I guess, resistant property. It's really good for things that are gonna be outdoors. So you can do this exact same process with ASA and get those um, smooth blended layer lines. I'm really happy I finally got around to trying this because again, I've had this on my list to do for a long time. I would argue years, this has been something I'm like, yeah, at some point I'll try out that ABS paper smoothing and finally decided no like now is the time to do it so maybe this will inspire one of you guys to do something that you've been putting off or wanting to try and experiment around with and uh, if you've done ABS paper smoothing before let me know if there's any other like valuable tips or tricks or things you've learned over time that would be good for someone that's looking to do this for the first time uh, let me know in the comments down below of course don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos I make a video every single Saturday so there's always fresh content coming your way from reviews tips and tricks to just projects that I'm doing. There's always something uh, new coming out. And if you do enjoy the content and you'd like to support the channel even more so, links will be down below to my Patreon. Thank you always to all my Patreon supporters. You guys allow me to spend a lot more time doing what I love, which is making content for you guys. And on that note, I will see you guys in my next video. This has been Daniel from ModBot and I am out. Peace guys.